Let's take a look at how we use the trigonometric identities. Before we do that, let's just remind ourselves we have learnt about two identities. We have learnt that tan of an angle is equal to the sine of an angle divided by the cos of an angle. And we have learnt that sine squared of an angle plus cos squared of an angle is equal to 1. Okay, simplify. I'd like for you to pause the video and to try these examples on your own. Number one, simplify tan squared theta times cos squared theta. So tan squared theta, we've already seen that tan is equal to sine over cos. So tan squared will be equal to sine squared over cos squared, multiplied by cos squared theta over 1. When we multiply two fractions, we can simplify any numerator with any denominator. So cos squared theta divided by cos squared theta is 1, and we are just left with sine squared theta. Question two, we are asked to prove this identity and we are also asked to state restrictions. Now a restriction is a value that a variable may not take because if it takes on that particular value, that part of the identity will be undefined. So if we just take a look and we see here what sort of things would make an identity undefined. We know from our study of equations in general that the denominator may not be a value that will result in that denominator being equal to zero. So our denominator is not allowed to be equal to zero. And in trigonometry, if we have the tan of an angle, tan itself has angle values for which it is undefined. So if we have the tan of an angle, my angle is not allowed to be 90 degrees plus k times 180. Beg your pardon, k times 180 degrees because that is where the tan graph has its asymptotes. Okay, so those are the things that the, the variables, you have to state the value of those variables in order to rule out any restrictions that you might have. So if we look here, there are no tan alphas. So the only restrictions we're going to have, or the only place our identity will be undefined, so identity will be undefined when... And we have two denominators. We have cos alpha. So cos alpha may not be equal to zero. So if we solve that equation for alpha, we will get 90 degrees. It is an equation in cos. So it will be 90 degrees plus k times 360. And it will be plus minus um, because the cos, this general solution for a cos equation is either the positive or the negative option. And one plus sine alpha also may not equal to zero. So therefore, sine alpha will be equal to negative one. And if we work out the shift sine of negative one, we get negative 90 degrees plus k times 360. Or the general solution for sine is also 180 minus the negative 90. So that will be alpha is 270 degrees plus k times 360. And for all of these, the value of k must be an integer. Okay, now that we've stated the restrictions, we can go ahead and solve the identity or prove the identity. If we start with our left-hand side, 1 minus sine alpha over cos alpha. Now, if you take a look at that fraction, there really is not very much that we can do. Sine alpha and cos alpha do technically have identities. Sine alpha, we could say, is equal to, um, because sine alpha over cos alpha is equal to tan alpha. So if we rearrange this expression, we could say that sine alpha is equal to cos alpha times tan alpha. But that's not really going to help us to factorize or to simplify this equation. And if we take a look at what we've got on the other side of the identity, we can see that we need a cos alpha in the numerator and a 1 plus sine alpha in the denominator. So one of the ways that we can do that is to multiply by cos alpha. That will then help us to introduce a cos alpha into the numerator. But I can't just multiply by whatever I like. The only thing I can multiply by in order to keep the value of something the same is 1. And 1 is anything divided by itself. So if I multiply by cos alpha over cos alpha, I'm effectively multiplying it by 1, and I'm not actually changing the value of my expression. So that leaves me with cos alpha into 1 minus sine alpha over cos squared alpha. 
Cos squared alpha, remember that we do have an identity for cos squared. Sine squared plus cos squared is 1. So if I solve that for cos squared, we get 1 minus sine squared alpha. So we will have cos alpha, 1 minus sine alpha, divided by 1 minus sine squared alpha. Okay, I'm just going to go and work up here. 1 minus sine squared alpha is the difference of two perfect squares. So it will factorize into 1 minus sine, 1 plus sine. Then the 1 minus signs will divide by each other, and we are left with cos alpha divided by 1 plus sine alpha, which is in fact equal to the right-hand side.